I have a, a wanting as um, in addition to this, and um, everything you said is totally perfect for what I've done about um, yes. believing I had to pay the price and all that. And so I'm at a point in my life where I feel like I've done that, and now what I want is is a total financial freedom and prosperity um, in a way that allows me to to move through life more smoothly and easily and especially to have what I want for my children. All right, if you want wealth beyond anything that you've experienced before, you have to do two things. You have to identify the wealth that you desire. In other words, what do you want it for? And then you have to relax and let it flow. Maybe we can give you some things that will help you. If I would help, like to have help, like let us you know, give you something here. That, Sixty-eight seconds. <laughs> let us give you. Let us give you something here that will help you. Have you ever said, "I've been well for a very long time, and I appreciate my wellness," but I see people who have been sick and. So I'm going to be sick for a while and allow somebody else to use the wellness that I've been using for a while. <laughs> do you ever say that? No. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Because you do not associate the wellness that you are asking for and allowing and in that which, in other words, you understand that the source is there and you can utilize it or not, but your utilization of it does not deprive anyone else. Well, this, this stream that we've been talking about, the stream that creates worlds, the stream from which all things come, is endless. In other words, there is no limit. There is no limit to the amount of well-being that can flow to you financially. It's an interesting thing. We watch your mass consciousness. Your government is after Bill Gates. And they say to him, essentially, you are taking too much of the pie. So we are just going to divide it up and give it to some other people who are complaining about it. <laughs> and we say, go ahead and do it. He'll just create another pie. <laughs> In other words, they will never find a way of taking away from someone who understands that there is a limitless supply. But those who are standing off in the shadow often think that there are all kinds of unfair or unjust things that are keeping them from the abundance while some other creep is receiving the abundance. And we say, it's, first you have to understand that the abundance flows. And the question is, two questions. Are you asking for it? Most of you are not. Most of you do not allow yourselves to imagine beyond what your current financial status will allow. That plus your credit limit. <laughs> and other words, it's Most of you do not allow yourself to imagine beyond that, you see. And so we've offered a game that can be very powerful. Most don't play it long enough to get much success with it, but it's called the prosperity game. And what it says is every day deposit some dollars into your account with your imagination and on that same day spend those dollars. On the first day, deposit a thousand and spend it. On the second day, two thousand and spend it. On the third day, three thousand and spend it. On the fourth day, four thousand and spend it. The thirtieth day, thirty thousand and spend it. And if you do this for a year, you will spend over sixty-six million dollars, which will go a long way to changing the way you allow dollars to flow through you. So, what happens within that process? What is the what is the game about? It's about using your imagination to find the feeling place of abundance. You see, the universe does not know if you really have the money in your account or if you just think you do. In other words, the universe does not know if you are looking at reality or if you have conjured the vibration through your imagination. The universe doesn't ask why you're vibrating that way. The universe just answers your vibration. But most people have not practiced utilizing your imagination. Do you know that almost all humans offer the majority of their vibration in response to what they are observing? So you observe and you offer a vibration and then the universe matches it and then you observe that which you offer a vibration and then the universe matches that. And what we are wanting you to understand is that by using your imagination the energy stream opens. Do you know this extraordinary monetary boom that is happening around the computer industry 
was set into motion by fewer than 10 people. And now millions of you are reaping the financial rewards from the momentum that they established because they got off to themselves and allowed themselves to imagine something that currently did not exist in reality. And the economic benefit has been extraordinary. Some of them are not even part of the economic benefit because they had a habit of thought about dollars that doesn't allow that part of it to flow to them. What is the economy anyway? The economy is the exchange of human energy. We did not say the exchange of human activity. The economy is the exchange of human energy. And it will expand or shrink depending upon the intent or desire of the masses. So think about what's happening. Billions of people on this planet banging around with each other, giving birth to constant new desire. And remember, ask and it is given. So the non-physical is answering that desire. And a very small percentage of you are in a place of allowing the desire to flow. Everyone could receive it. And the, in other words, the universe has the capacity to expand, to fulfill. You could all be billionaires, every one of you. Every person on the planet. Because the universe has the capacity to expand to meet that, you see. But there are not that many that are asking. And there are even fewer that are answering. You get a sense of how this works. So how can I put myself in a position of being one who is in alignment with the stream? People will say, I want to win the lottery. We say, what will you do with it? They, they offer very little they're asking for so much, but they have not allowed themselves to think much. And why is that? Because if you goose up your desire in an environment of disbelief, you'll make yourself uncomfortable. And you do not want to risk making yourself uncomfortable, so you don't allow yourself to dream. It's too big of a risk for most. If I pretend that I have dollars and then I wake up and I don't, I'll be sad. We say, yes, but you could pretend again, and then you'd be glad. And then you could pretend again, and then you'd be glad again. And then you'd pretend again, and then you'd be glad again, until your pretense would begin to feel familiar. Your pretense would begin to feel more familiar than the reality that you're living. The reality that you're living is temporary. This is where you're going, you see. This is what is real. This is what is most familiar. And then the universe wakes up one morning and sees you differently. This is who this one is. Say. What happens is, you stand here evaluating the contrast. A new desire is born. The new desire initially is uncomfortable because it is a rocket of desire that has been born out of an awareness of something missing. So there's this rocket of desire that's uncomfortable initially. Your work is to make it comfortable. Your work is to look at it, talk about it, pretend it, add detail to it until it begins to feel familiar. And as it feels familiar, now you stand in a new place with a new set of, of circumstances. And the, the whole thing begins again and again and again and again. We were visiting with a woman recently who has an adult daughter who said to her mother, there is this thing I want and it looks like it might happen and if it does... It will be so wonderful that all of the things that I have ever wanted that didn't happen won't matter anymore. This will make up for all that stuff that I was deprived of. And we said to her mother, she's not on the brink of this. Because when something feels so extraordinary that it would solve every problem you've ever had, you're, it, it isn't a familiar feeling. In other words, it has to feel like the next logical step before it is the next logical step. Well, how can you get to the place where outrageous 
glorious abundance feels like the next logical step if you've got your nose so fully in what you are currently living and what you are currently living is so far apart from that. You have to pretend it. You have to imagine it. You have to make it so familiar that it's the next logical step. Listen to those people who are your masters in different things, whether it's sports or music, and listen to what some of them say, that from the time I was little, I knew this. I used to get off to myself and dream it. I would go into my closet and pretend it. In other words, how often do you hear that? They played with it, and even though adults around them said, don't be silly, get your head out of the clouds, get your feet on the ground and face reality, many of them will tell you over and over again, I did not listen to them. I did not allow them to take my dream from me. I kept my dream alive. Because the universe is matching your vibration. It always has and it always will, you see. So if there is something in your life that you have that you don't want, it only stays because you keep giving it your attention. If there's something in your life that is missing that you do want, it doesn't come because you keep noticing the absence of it more than you imagine the presence of it. It is that simple. Law of attraction is a very straightforward thing. It does not squirrel around on you at all. It does not play favorites. It does not take sides. It is not Republican. It is not Democrat. In other words, it is this fair-minded <laughs> law that responds purely to the vibration of your being, you see. And you can tell by the way you feel how you're doing. So if you have a dream and when you think about it, it makes you uncomfortable. It's not in the pro... It, it cannot come to you now. It, it could very well be in the process of being created, but you're not letting it in and your discomfort tells you that. So your work is to think about what you want and feel good at the same time. So you're reaching for a feeling of relief. Let's put this on a feeling level. Rather than say, I'll think this thought and then I'll have this feeling to it reach for the feeling what is the feeling of uh, think for a minute and feel with us for a minute the feeling of love you can feel that can't you can't you see the face of your dog or cat they're easy to love aren't they or your baby in other words it is easy to find the feeling of love isn't it find the feeling of fear Easy to find that feeling, isn't it? In other words, you, you can find a feeling just by thinking the word that you associate with the feeling and generating the feeling right here and now. Think of the feeling of calm. Think of the feeling of relief. We are, we are to the end of this segment. If we were to take more time and we were to spend at least 17 seconds on any of those topics, we will when we come back from segment of refreshment, you could stay there long enough to feel the fullness of any of those feelings. We're out of time. Good time for a segment of refreshment. Thank you. Thank you. Are, please. And, please. and I did accept. And are you refreshed? Yes. Then think about food. We'll talk about emotions in a bit here. Let's let's go a little bit further and then we'll weave it all in together. Here, then here. Right here, second row. Good morning. Um, one of the things that I've been listening to your tapes for a year and really appreciate them. However, one of the blocks that I have is where is the place for compassion? It's like when I see a homeless person on the street, I'm still getting caught. I either find myself saying, well, you created this, <laughs> or I'm thinking, I have so much and I should help this person. So I kind of go back and forth in this depending on what the person feels like. And then it's like even... Well, take it a, take it a little bit further. What, what do you think that person would prefer? Do you, think, do, you think those are, do you think there are only two choices? In other words, um, you create your own reality and you're doing a rotten job, so suffer. Or uh, come and be my dependent and I will continue to agree with you that you are incapable of achieving what you want. Are those the only two choices? Or is there, is there, some, is there another choice? I don't know what to offer in that moment though when I'm looking at it or I'm interacting with it. Well, in the moment there isn't much you can do to change the circumstances other than 
providing some action, perhaps. But here's what we've noticed. If you see something like that and, and you feel the discomfort of it, your discomfort means that you are observing something and including it. But in doing so, it has caused your vibration to alter from what is natural.